Hey friends, welcome back to your Thursday edition of Hot News. Hope you're enjoying your life. I really sincerely do. And I hope you might be one of the people who might win the RTX 2080 Super that we're giving away courtesy of Asetech. You can check the link in the video description to find out how to enter. But a 2080 Super for free could be yours, okay? Liquid cooled, right? But then you just slot it into the PCI Express slot instead of having to like manage cables and whatnot. It's phenomenal, okay? So check that out. And also check out today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Dot Tech Domains. My friends, you're into tech, right? Of course you are, you're watching UFD Tech. Why wouldn't you? It's such an obvious question. But if you wanna represent your brand in the best way possible, getting a Dot Tech Domain is the best way to show it off. We used a Dot Tech Domain for our website when we were still running it. I kinda had to shut that down when we moved back to United States, but UFD.Tech just made sense because UFD Tech. You can go to the search on their website and you can find which .tech domains are still available for your project of your choosing. Spagbag.tech, Brainist.tech, what have you, you can pick up whatever .tech domain you want. And if you go to the link in the video description, go.tech forward slash UFD, you can enter coupon code UFD Tech and save up to 80% off the one and five year .tech domains. Represent yourself the best way possible, my friends. Whether it's something that has nothing to do with tech and you wanna fake people out, or you really wanna show the people that you're into tech, like UFD tech, you can get a .tech domain. Check it out at the link in the video description. 80% off, that's a steal. You're, you're stealing from them, don't do that. Okay, pay the money, but it's less. 80% less. And let's check out now how AMD is just constantly, just, just, I, do they stop? Do they stop to consider what they're doing to Intel? Do they stop to think about how we've just had way too much from them? It's so much goodness we can't possibly take anymore. Well, they don't care. That AMD just is gonna keep, continue punching us in the face with good processors, which the Ryzen Threadripper Pro 3995WX has appeared. And this is a monster of a chip. As you can see, obviously it looks very similar to the regular Threadripper series, but there are a few things to note here. Number one, should have 64 cores and 128 threads. That's nothing necessarily new, but apparently because of the Pro name, it's going to have eight channel DDR4, which means it can support up to two terabytes of RAM and it's basically the Epic 7662 processor, but with faster clock speed since it's a Ryzen chip. But the weird thing is this might necessitate an upgrade in motherboard where you have to be an SRWRX8 socket instead of the STRX4, which there might be apparently, according to what we're hearing, some crossover, but it appears that this is gonna be another class of product just above Threadripper, just below Epic, but just enough to make Intel continue to feel inferior. Sources uh, told video cards that they're expecting that AMD will announce these chips as early as July 14th, so less than a week away from that, and still two weeks away from my beloved 4700G potentially being on shelves. But that's okay, we got another Ryzen processor to talk about, and Ryzen 7 Extreme Edition. How does that sound? It sounds to me like we already had that, right? We had the XT chips that just launched a couple days ago. You'd think that'd be enough, but nay. Nay, it is not. Okay, Ryzen 7 Extreme Edition is showing up in a laptop. There was a leak of this chip back in May, and now there's some indication that, oh, it's it's real because the company known as NEC has launched their Lavi N15, which features a Ryzen 7 Extreme Edition CPU, to which I hear you say, what would that be, Brett? We don't know. We actually have no clue. It actually, according to the specs that they're listing, has the exact same core count and frequency as the Ryzen 7 4800U with nothing else differentiating. We actually don't know anything about the GPU, and it could be that the Extreme Edition has a better integrated GPU in it, but as far as we're aware, the CPU is exactly the same. So how is it extreme? Because they say it is. We'll just obviously have to wait for a formal announcement more about this to find find out what exactly is gonna be a mobile extreme edition U series processor. But what can be extreme is your case because it's beautiful and whatnot. Well, the Fantex P500A got announced. This is one of their mesh lineups, as you can see here. This is their continued attempt to bring airflow to their lineup with one millimeter thick mesh that goes on the front. And apparently this thing can even support dual systems if you have one of their special dual system power supplies and bracket adapters, but I mean, Dang, according to the reviews that I've been reading, it's pretty decent. Uh, the fans that are included with it are a little loud, but overall, it's a gorgeous look. And dang, Fentex, chef's kiss, okay? And chef's kiss, 
to balloon internet, which in case you haven't heard is the thing that's coming, especially courtesy of Alphabet, also known as the parent company of Google. Well, they just launched the Loon balloon powered internet service in Kenya, partnering up with Telcom in Kenya. I do not personally have a nice feeling towards Telcom because of my experience with them in South Africa, just a giant state owned garbage company. I don't know how they are in Kenya, so I'm not even going to comment on that. But apparently, they're going to be providing internet to 35,000 customers using 35 different balloons and covering around 50,000 square kilometers, which is going to allow people to access internet in ways that they haven't been able to before. The balloons are going to be up to about 12 miles up and give an upload speed of around four to almost five megabits per second and a download speed of around 19 megabits per second with a latency of only 19 milliseconds. That might be good enough to game on hmm should i i mean obviously i can't travel very much right now but going to kenya to test loon internet would be a really cool video idea hmm anybody want to sponsor that trip i don't know let's let's talk about something else that i don't need sponsored sega's astro city mini is an arcade game that is just like a little uh fighting stick guy but it apparently has an hdmi a micro usb and a usb a port for separate control pads arcade joysticks a headphone jack and you can plug it into your tv with that hdmi port it's gonna cost 117 dollars. this is like what it includes 36 i just that's a neat little small toy and what's small but not necessarily a toy it's the world's first monolithic mems speaker which stands for microelectromechanical systems these are going to potentially replace drivers that we currently have in headphones apparently the first ones which are known as the montara have full bandwidth from 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz with a flat frequency response highly uniform eliminates driver matching and calibration consistent silicon memory movement enables the active compensation for low thd it has less than 0.1 millisecond mechanical mechanical latency, which enables active noise cancellation across wider frequencies, and it's IP57 water and dust resistant, and it also apparently has longer battery life if actually powered, and it looks like they're going to be seeding out samples in July with full production ramping up in the first quarter of 2021, so we might see these mid of next year. So about a year from now is when we could start potentially seeing MEMS speakers in actual in-ear devices, which could be very cool. But what wasn't cool was Boeing screwing up their Starliner launch, and NASA thought that too, and so they launched an investigation. I mean, it was it's kind of how they do things, Boeing and NASA coming out. NASA specifically saying, hey, we found 80 different things that we kind of need you to fix before we move forward. It would have been great if they did something like this with the 737 MAX, but you know, Boeing apparently just wants to throw away their reputation for making sure all of their aircraft is safe. Obviously, this is like two separate divisions of the company. Anyways, uh, NASA coming out saying, hey, fix that stuff. And Ninja trying to fix his career after being on Mixer and averaging about 3,000 viewers a stream. He showed up on YouTube yesterday and pulled around 120,000 active viewers, which in case you didn't know, is 40 times what he was getting on Mixer. Anyways, according to sources, Ninja hasn't signed an exclusivity deal with U2. It's just test trialing streaming right now and could potentially even show up on Twitch, maybe even not as a partner, just trying to see what is the best platform for him moving forward. But you can see currently his video is sitting at 1.6 million views after being streamed only four hours ago. Uh, it's just probably going to continue to grow. But Ninja Mixer didn't necessarily kill him. However, uh, streaming is more of a sustained thing. So his first stream back might see bigger numbers and what we'll see if he continues to stream on YouTube in the future. We might see that drop or we might see a pickup. Who knows? But picking up a date is what I hear the young kids call it because I've been married for over a decade. I actually don't know how the dating scene works. I was married before Tinder was even out on phones and newfangled. How do you do, fellow kids? Well, Tinder is starting uh, testing video dates where you can connect face to face with people that you are dating and they're calling it face-to-face -face, oddly enough and uh yeah they're gonna make it so that you can the remote date they're testing it in several different countries in the united states brazil and others more than likely due to the pandemic trying to make sure that people can connect you can rate the date afterwards and just kind of see how things go from there and i want to see how mini led goes because it's supposed to be beautiful and gorgeous and the next generation of screen display and macbooks specifically are supposed to be getting it in 2021 with a 14 inch macbook pro which is being rumored to have the mini led displays it's supposed to be launching on the 14 inch 
inch MacBook Pro with the 15 and 16 inch models later after that with at least six different mini LED products in their product categories from that point forward. The reports are coming out that Apple is apparently going to forego the way of using Chinese mini LED manufacturers in favor of Taiwanese ones so that they can get around any sort of China US trade war that happens to go on, which you just kind of have to hope that uh, China doesn't pull a Hong Kong on Taiwan because that could potentially, you know, ruin trade agreements and whatnot. We'll find out in the future and we'll find out how good the HP Reverb G2 VR headset is because it is coming out this September. In case you don't remember us talking about this, it basically has a, the exact same specs as the Valve Index, except for it has inside out tracking instead of needing the lighthouses for external tracking. So that makes it so that you could have tetherless VR, but then also get the, the high quality that is the Valve Index headset. They're supposed to be going for $600, which actually is kind of cheap compared to the Valve Index, which is $1,000, but that includes the base station and all of that. Anyways, let me know if you're excited for the HP Reverb G2, and let me know if you're excited for gaming phones, because the Snapdragon 865 Plus been announced, and it's going to be in gaming phones. I, that's as far as I care about that. And the Note 20 got leaked in a video where somebody showed off the Note 20 Ultra. We'll leave the link in the video description for you to check out. Jimmy is promo and his video on that massive camera bump on the Note 20 Ultra. Holy crap. And holy crap is what I have to say to anybody who can't afford this. Holy crap, what are you doing with your life? It's just $5, okay? It's a little bit more than $5, but in case you want a 100 terabyte SSD that fits in a three and a half inch form factor, which I think is phenomenal. Why aren't we having massive capacity SSDs in the three and a half inch form factor? I think the cases still come with it, so stacking more SSDs makes sense. You want 100 terabytes, $40,000. Yeah, big and thick storage according to this Tom's Hardware byline. I think this is phenomenal. But in case $40,000 for 100 terabytes of storage is just too much for you, you can pick up their 50 terabyte unit, which comes in at under half that cost of $12,500, which is, you know, easy, easy to afford. I mean, how much are four terabyte drives at this point? The one we just got for Sprint, I believe is $800. So eight, uh, 50 divided by four is 12.5. Then you multiply that by 700, 8,750. You actually would come in cheaper just buying a whole bunch, but then you would need all of the M.2. So this is, I mean, it's a, it's four flash controllers and then has it, a whole bunch of like layering crap that it does in you, you got spare cash or maybe, I don't know, Nimbus data. You want to send us one? I will show it off in a video and I will show myself out of this video because we're done with here. Hot news. It's oh, it's over. That was it. It's the complete part. And you can complete your life with today's video sponsor. Big thanks again to Dot Tech Domains for sponsoring today's video. Go to go.tech forward slash UFD to find your domain of choice, right? And then coupon code UFD Tech. Save 80% off of one in five year subscriptions. 80%. That's a lot. That's a lot of damage off the total price. That's 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 free real estate. And I'm gonna complete my heart by leaving. I love you. I'll see you tomorrow for Friday, supposedly. As long as I don't die, that's basically the only thing that's gonna stop me. Or getting supremely sick. Hopefully I don't die. If I got morbid, bye.